Hey everybody, as you know, one of the many hats I wear um, is animal communicator. Um, communicating with animals is very interesting. Um, it, obviously, it's not like having a conversation, like a, you know, physically, but it, it, it can be actually sometimes <laughs> if the animals are really good at talking. Um, but, you know, anyway, we won't go there. <laughs> But um, I thought I thought I'd feel into like three different collective animals and to just let you know partic any particular messages they have for you. So this could be an animal that you have now. And there's going to yeah, the three different ones could be like maybe you choose an animal from the past and then the two animals that you currently own. So that could go one, two, three, or it could be um, all three of them are ones that you own right now. Um, and you could just feel into as I read them off to you. Yeah, that sounds like that one. And that sounds like that one. You know, they may not, well, they wouldn't be in order because there is no order, but you, you'll be able to figure out if something resonates for you or not. Or you might say, oh, mine is having an issue with that. That must be the one that that, that those cards pertain to or whatever. It's an intuitive process. Let's just say it's an intuitive process. So just feel it out um, for yourself. So I guess, I mean, I've never done this. So <laughs> I think I want to start off with um, just to get a feel for where your animal is at in each group. I want to, I want to get like a garden guardian, guardians, um, goddesses, gods and guardians deck as to what the animals kind of going through and learning in, in, or maybe was like, if it, if it's for a past animal, it could be what they learned when they were with you or when they knew you or what, even what they're learning now, you know, in, on the other side, or it could be what they're learning with you if they're alive in, in your life right now. So, okay. Spirit, you with me? All right. <laughs> okay. So God, could you please help us tap into three collective collectives of animals? So it could be, you know, cats, dogs, pigs, Guinea pigs, horses, goats, it doesn't matter. Three pets. But um, I am going to focus on dogs and cats, the energy of dogs and cats mostly, though, because uh, that's what most of you have in your homes with you. So, okay, collective for, for mostly dogs and cats, but it could expand. Uh, first, first group of animals, please. Um, what is their collective energy in terms of like what, who, is, what, guide do they have that's helping them right now um if or you know you guys know what you're talking about all right we'll leave it up to them all right leah stand your ground that's interesting that's really interesting and this is a card about water so this could be they are feeling emotional um i'll read it to you but it could be they're feeling emotional or it could be they're they're drinking water that isn't good for them and they need they need to have better water distilled water is the best water even though it's known for being used used just in you know like as not drinking water uh, there's a reason that they have made you believe that it is only for you know that it's not for not for drinking um that's another re another way that they're kind of duping us so uh, distilled water, especially homemade distilled water, specifically homemade distilled water that you make in your own kitchen is the very best water you can possibly give your animals. I would never, never give your animals tap water, no matter what. So if you're doing that, please do something about that. Stop giving them tap water ever. It's very dangerous. Um, okay. Okay. You haven't, and if you don't know that, go on my Telegram channel because I've posted all kinds of things about how dangerous the regular water is. Even bottled water, guys. I've put my bottled, I've put all kinds of kinds of, well, if you do a study on what types of water are the, is the best, and I also have one of those studies up on my Telegram channel. But if you look into it, it's better than spring water, better than regular bottled water, better than air, all the different kinds, sparkling water. There's nothing better than you can get uh, distilled from home. <laughs> anyway, and I've tested it out. Like I said, I had tons of different kinds of bottled water and um, I put it through the machine and the machine still killed stuff off of it. So, okay. You have an extremely giving and supportive nature. Of course they do, right? Everyone um, can always count on you to be there for them. You put others first and go out of your way to understand their needs. 
and you bend over backwards to honor their requests. These are traits that often show up in empaths, healers, light workers, earth angels, intuitives, and sensitives. So your animal is a sensitive and a natural healer as well. Goddess Leah is urging you to set some limits before you risk losing yourself under a pile of other people's needs, demands, and expectations. So your animal could be possible. This collective of the first first collective of the animals, um, they just really they want so badly for you to be okay that they will sacrifice themselves. Um, is what this sounds like. So Leah smiles widely and assertively claims generous space for you. By pushing her stick into the earth, she says, are you a living saint? No. Are you being a doormat? Possibly. Do you have needs, dreams, and wishes of your own? Yes, you do. So start putting yourself first. Ask for what you want. Ask for help and to be open to receiving it. You may feel uncomfortable to begin with, but my waters will enliven you. Together we'll clear stagnant patterns and find fertile new ground. Okay, so... Um, what comes to mind as I'm reading that <clears throat> is for this collective of animals, I need to tell them how to ask you for help, number one. And for two, since we just did that uh, reading on black magic and it had to do with water, I'm going to do a black magic clearing because when I was shuffling the pet cards, one of the cards that fell out was um, being black magic is being sent our way. So your animal may be trying to maybe trying to get your attention, maybe trying to like if it's a cat might be meowing a lot at you or your dog might be barking quite a bit. And it's because they're trying to get your attention and let you know that some black magic is being done, um, being directed at you. OK, so I am going to do a clearing uh, for this collective. Shane, Taike, they, okay, they, uh-huh. They're kind of like, don't, don't tell them because like mom and dad are going to get upset. Um, they, they get scared of black magic and here comes Nala. And she just meowed. Yes. So maybe that's why they don't tell you is because they're, they are just trying to take it all on themselves. So, so maybe try to take um, black magic more in stride and things like that. Don't freak out. Don't freak out when, about, you know, you, this, this is going to be different for everybody, how this lands, but um, maybe just show your animal that you can take on your own, you know, that you can fight this on your own, whatever it is. And that they're not adding an extra burden to you by letting you know that there's been black magic directed at you. In other words. Okay. Um, and I'm going to let them know how best they can process um, any kind of anything that they take off of you and take it into themselves, which sometimes they they will they will literally grow cancer or the, they will grow sick or they will have all kinds of things happen to them physically because they're trying to protect you. So they'll take all the energy into their body and they'll manifest all kinds of illnesses and things. They basically so they, they commit suicide to protect you. So. Um, I'm going to show them what I what I usually tell animals is to pee or poop um, to get it out. That's how they get it out. I tell them you can take it if you want to, but it's better if you can like let your owner know or let your parent know that uh, just to like lighten up and have fun and kind of try to communicate with them. So you guys have like an ebb and a flow kind of relationship where you know that that like I just I just said to one of my cats yesterday, I told, I told Annie, uh, cause she sometimes meows at me. And I said, I told her, I said, this meow sounds just like that meow. And I said, so if it's black magic, can you just say meow or something like, kind of like draw it out? Like, kind of like, a, like almost like a growl, like, meow, like something that sounds more like a growl as opposed to like just a meow. And she immediately imitated the same sound back. And I said, okay, great. Thank you. Now we can differentiate better, you know, because otherwise I'd have to use my intuition and be like, which does she mean that she wants to do this? Or does she mean that they're, that I need to protect myself kind of thing. So your animals are there to help you. Um, cats especially are psychic protectors and dogs are usually the physical protectors. So try to get some communication going with your animals so that they can help you as well. But again, don't, you know, don't encourage them to take it on for themselves by you being open yourself to whatever they have to say. Okay. 
So I'm going to explain to them the process of eliminating in order to get rid of the the negativity rather than just keep it in in their body. Believe it or not, some some animals I found didn't know that you could do that. And so when I explained it to them, they were like so relieved. Okay. Now, in the meantime, I'm also, uh, your animals do not have to be in the room listening to this or watching this um, in order to get the benefits of it, but I'm actually clearing your animals as well. Those animals that are connected with this collective energy, they're being cleared. Okay, so now I'm telling them how they can best alert you. Um, and I'm going to tell them a similar message, like a, some kind of a drawn out growl that sounds different than what they normally would do. Um, like they had, they need to separate and have a different tone for, I want to go play. Um, there's a threat here and, you know, all the different, you know, I'm going to explain to them about tones, like using different, you know, drawing out, using verbalization, using like, um, you know what I mean? Okay. And some of them, um, it looks like I saw like a dog burrow under blankets when it normally doesn't do that. So any kind of behavior or sound that isn't one that they would normally make could be an indicator that there's black magic. So all you have to do then, if you see your animal do something really weird, just be like, is this, um, is this a black magic hit? And then you'll get a yes. And then you can figure it out from there. And then you can thank your animal. And then your animal can come out from under the covers or whatever. (laughs) So I have a a large range of different animals here. So some of them understand, some of them don't. So let me just see. Hala ape na ai shishina hana ake e huma maana haina tain. Okay. Okay, they get it now. Okay, they got it. So let's take a look at um, their cards. I'm going to use my pet deck. This is a pet oracle deck I have. Hipima a shinche, hela ala ina taike. Yeah, some of them are thirsty, um, and I'm trying to figure out why they're thirsty. Uh, Some of them uh, could have diabetes from, okay, but some of them are being given snacks that are too salty, like too, something's dehydrating them in their food. You got to be careful what's in their food as well. Oh my gosh, people don't, just generally speaking, don't know how to feed their animals at all. So maybe do some research. It, don't just assume that, oh, well, you just give your cat cat food or you just give your dog dog food. Actually take the time to look it up and say, what kind of food does a cat usually eat? Like, what is a good food? What's the best kind of food that they could have? Um, try not to give them anything that says natural flavor for for that matter. Do not have any food that has natural flavoring in it. Um, from what I understand, that's uh, human juice. <laughs> so... Not not such great stuff. Either that, or I've also heard that it's it's if it's not that, then it is definitely very toxic and bad for them. Natural flavoring. Okay. Natural flavoring. Now chicken natural flavor, something like that. Um, I don't I don't know. You'll have to look into that kind of stuff be some, be yourself, but just be really leery and just do do a bunch of research. Um, okay. I don't need to go to the vet. I'm just fine. You're worried for nothing. I'm okay. If anything, maybe get uh, get me some energy healing. Okay. So if you were worried that your animal is really sick and needs to go to the vet or something like that, um, or or they are thirsty, maybe just um, you know once you once you figure out a better food, it's just going to go away. So they don't want to alarm you. Um, If you're going to have a vet, try to look for a homeopathic vet. I would not go to a vet that makes you get the shots, makes them get the shots. 
but makes you make them get the shots. They are going to feel terrible later. They're going to feel absolutely terrible at what they've done to all these animals by insisting that they all get the bee. Um, I personally had a cat that died from it. And um, I have a very, very, very guilty conscience from it. I mean, I just feel terrible for what I did to her because she was my best friend and she knew she was trying to tell me, I I don't trust this. I don't want to get this shot. I don't want to, you know, and she just was was like terrified to go in there. And uh, and I made her do it. I made her do it. I felt it was the right thing. So, you know, anyway, when all this goes down, when the truth gets out about all of this, you know, they're just going to feel terrible. So do not go with a, a vet who is blind and doesn't understand what's happening. So go with a natural vet as best you can um, if you're going to take them to do anything. And I wouldn't definitely, they're the same as we are in terms of like, it is not uh, gener generally speaking, not a good idea to give them any kind of prescriptions, any kind of drugs. Um, there are some things like fenbendazole or, and things like that that are, that uh, kill cancer and, you know, so there, I mean, there are exceptions, but just try to get a vet that, who's in the know of what's happening in our world if you can. I think I need some desensitization around this fear so I'm not so afraid anymore. So if your animal has some kind of a fear that they're always jumping at something or they're always barking at something or running from something or just seem really afraid of everything, um, desensitization is a really good thing to do. Um, let's say it's fireworks for example, or the vacuum cleaner or something like that. If you can get them far away from it and give them treats when they look at it and just show interest without their hackles raising and getting really upset, you got to catch them before when they're just looking at it. You give them lots of praise and rewards, um, good treats. <laughs> Even peas and carrots can be wonderful treats, you know. Um, so, but you basically just kind of gradually, very slowly, not in one sitting and certainly not in like even a week. I mean, it can take a while because you only want to do like five minute increments every time you train. But basically you just want to bring that closer and closer and closer until, until they don't have any reaction at all. But always like if they do react and they start getting upset about it, then you've gone, you've pushed them too, too close to it too fast. You got to back back up again and go again and just reward them as they only show curiosity or interest. Okay. I think I'd be healthier or happier if I lost weight. Well, there you go. Yeah. Cause they could have diabetes. They could, could be feeding them too many treats. Maybe just cut back on the treats, give them healthier treats, you know, something like that. Could you help me work on that, please? I understand I need to do this. So your animals a lot of times will know that they're getting spoiled rotten and they're getting way too many treats. So uh, just consider that. And yeah, if they're drinking too much water, they could have diabetes or something. So, um, or just take away, um, yeah, just get them better, get them better treats, I feel, and that should clear up a lot. Oh, they wanted me to say too that um, if your animal has allergies, I've heard that quercetin, spelled Q-U-E-R-C-E-T-I-N, works uh, well with for allergies, and I just found that out. So I'm not, you know, I don't, I don't I'm not well educated in all that kind of stuff, but that's just something I heard. So you could give it a shot. Okay, so um, anything else that this that this collective wants to say? I love when you talk to me. So I've heard that there's also like on my tribe today in Telegram, Telegram tribe chat, somebody mentioned like there's a channel called Billy Talks or Billy Speaks. It's B-I-L-L-I. -L -L -I. And um, I, I think it's an, it's a cat that talks to, uh, pushing buttons. It tells you certain things push, by pushing buttons. And I, and I have those as well. I haven't taught these guys how to do it yet, but your animals can actually learn to talk to you by pressing um, their paw on a button and giving you a message. You can teach them how to learn that. So you could essentially be having a conversation with your animals and they could be telling you what, what they what they need and what they want. Please teach me what you want me to do rather than getting upset so it makes matter so I, I don't make matters worse. So don't just get upset with your animal and don't just, yeah, some the next card is about allergies. So your animal could be allergic to something being that I just mentioned the quercetin thing. Okay, so um, 
Yeah. So teach them. Don't just get frustrated and angry at your animal because your animal is really doing the best that they can and they really don't want, want to make you upset at all. So if you ever find yourself getting upset with your animal, first off, know that it's your fault. <laughs> okay. It's the a- animals are never being stubborn or jerks or making fun of you or anything that you think that's all in your head. Um, so it's anthropomorphism is when you project down to your animal that they're doing something messed up to you or something like that. So don't get upset. Um, animals always come from a very, usually come from a very, very innocent place and they don't know, they just don't know what else to do or how else to ask you for something. So they might do something that seems mischievous or sneaky or, you know, spill something on purpose or whatever it is that you, that you're irritated by, but, um, take the time, you know, take five minutes a day or even three minutes a day to, to show your animal what it is that you're asking of them and what you would like to be doing. If if you're in a project, let's say you uh, you said, well, say you're a cook and you're cooking in the kitchen and your dog is like getting underfoot constantly and it's really annoying you. And so you end up like yelling at your dog to get the hell out of the kitchen and rah, 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 rah. So um, what you can do instead of all of that is rewind <laughs> And, and look at the dog coming in the kitchen and getting in the way and be observant, catch it and say, huh, I wonder what I could teach my dog or my cat that could teach them that when I come into the kitchen to do this, they are then cued to go do this other thing, like go lay down on their bed or go to their crate or go out back, you know. So then make that what you do from then on. Whenever you go to make dinner, go and put your animal in the crate. And praise them and give them a treat and give them something to do. Give them an activity. Put them out back whenever you go to make dinner and put them out back. Whenever you and your spouse have an argument or something like that, show your animal, okay, time to go outside. And every time then you get in in an argument, your animal is going to learn, okay, I need to go stand by the back door so that they'll let me out because they're in a fight and I don't want to get involved and make it worse or or whatever. And your animals get very uncomfortable when you guys fight. So um just like kids like don't involve them don't make them feel bad you know let them go outside uh so just be aware instead of getting upset just be aware of what's happening and try to try to think positive reinforcement in terms of what you can do to get your animal to show your animal this is what you do instead of what you're doing right now this is what i would love for you to do instead okay um anything else This is so funny. I pulled a masculine card just randomly. (laughs) Notes from your beloved ghoster. And I picked, I'm thinking of you right now. And it's putting a smile on my face. (laughs) I can't wait till we're face to face. I always get giddy the closer I get to coming to see you. I'm closer than you may think. (laughs) That was awesome. (laughs) Oh my gosh. All right. Um, so any, okay. Anything else that this, that this collective wants, um, me to address or talk about somebody within this collective who has this animal that if this resonates for you, you're like, ah, this sounds like this is this animal that's, um, let me describe the animal a little bit, a little bit timid. They don't like to be like out in the middle of all the action and get a bunch of attention. So they're a little bit more like they may even make a, a smaller sounds, to stay quiet or maybe just don't make a lot of sound. Um, compliant. I get like compliant, like, like we'll do, do as you say. Um, sometimes they just don't know what to do. So they, you know, they might mess up, but they, if they knew they would go do it. Um, somebody has a broken fence. And I think something's been getting in the yard that's been alarming them. This might be a dog. It could be a cat, I guess, but it's like, are you aware that there is a cougar walking into our backyard kind of thing? Like, it's it's like, oh my gosh, there's something in the backyard that's been coming through. They don't, they just need to put that board back up on the fence. It's making them nervous. It's like, put the board back up on the fence. So um, if you have a fence in your backyard, this would be a really good time to go check it and make sure that the fence is up and that, you know, or put something up that could keep something like that from coming through the yard into the yard at night. 
Um, some of them, um, before they had, before you had them, they were treated pretty crappy. And because of you, they actually feel very moved and touched very deeply that you have put them, um, like making them feel like a king or a queen. Like they just feel like, wow, I didn't realize that I could actually feel important. So you really warm their hearts. And, uh, some, one of them just said like, yeah, you saved me. You like, you saved me from abuse. You saved me from having been treated terrible. So, um, thank you to those of you who have adopted your animals and, or animal and, you know, they, they're very, very touched by your care, concern, and the level of importance you put on them. Um, they also are saying that there's somebody in your life who's ignoring you and not being very nice to you. And they want you to have somebody who treats you like you treat your animal. So they say that you deserve to be treated the way they're treated. So they want you to have somebody in your life who is um, being very playful with you and happy and fun and would even do things for you and go get things for you and even buy you things at the store like you do for your little person or your little friend, <laughs> your little friend or your little pet or whatever, however you want to say it. <laughs> um, any Okay, a fairy. What do you want to say? Oh, um, that we're guardians, she said, that we're guardians. So every animal has a fairy um, kind of assigned to it that's kind of looking out for them. Wherever you see a bunch of animals or plants, um, there are usually lots of spirits that are kind of looking out over things. Um, so... They also help them to have a sense of humor if they're taking themselves too seriously or they soothe them to make them feel better and things like that. So um, is there anything else that you want them to know about them having a fairy around? You can ask, you can, um, you can request from the fairy to help with a certain thing. Like, can you please help him get over his fear of this? Could you please, um, could you please help him not be so sensitive when this happens or that happens or it's like you can communicate with the fairies as well to, to help with your animals and they'd be happy to do that. Is that it? Okay. All right. Um, animal number two or animal collective number two. <laughs> um, any special requests from one? Uh, they already, they, yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't see anything more from one. Okay. So collective animal number two, cat or dog, mostly. Cat or dog number two. This is different, huh? <laughs> okay. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I was not expecting this. Kadesh, sexual wisdom. <laughs> Most pets are neutered. So I wonder what this is. <laughs> L-M-N-O-P. Okay, <laughs> this is going to be so interesting. <laughs> Do I want to read it? <laughs> this card signifies a time of sexual healing and new experiences of intimacy. Intimacy, it's not sexual. Okay. Um, Kadesh can activate your intuitive wisdom about sex as sacred nourishing for uh, a sacred nourishing force. The easiest way to access your sexual spiritual knowledge is to be in tune with your body. Be still and become aware of your breath. Okay, so first thing I'm seeing feeling is that your this animal had been abused to the point that it had left its body. So that might definitely help you be specific as to which animal this is. If you can place one hand on your heart area and the other on your belly or simply focus on the sensations of your body. Imagine, okay, listen to the first feeling, impression, one more sexual. Okay, sorry, I need to fill in, fill in this for a minute. Um, okay. How about a night again? Um, <clears throat> 
Hmm, this is interesting. Okay, okay. So the way that they have been hurt before by human hands and arms and you know our our body parts as human beings, the way that they that this animal was mishandled or treated physically uh was like a violation. It was like a rape in a sense. And it hurt their feelings. You know, it made them feel like they couldn't trust people anymore. And it made them pretty frightened of hands and arms and legs and just any any kind of like physical presence that would that could be, oh, you know, what is, what is that? Don't move that thing too fast. Don't walk too fast. Don't come up on me like this. Don't reach down on me like this. Like it just feel, it feels like the, um, the physicality of the human body has been an issue for this animal. And so they are pretty shy and afraid of um, physical interaction. So they may get scared if you pick them up or if you, um, you know, raise your arm really, really fast or something, they might flinch or, you know, things like that. But since they've been with you, I feel like it has been healing them and it's been making them feel like actual pleasure can come from touching them you know um i i have one of my cats nala like i i massage her now um so she just she just happened to come up sometime when i had this massager and i just ran it down her back and she was just like <gasps> like at first it was like a little alarming and then she was like whoa wow wow so from then on whenever i would do use the massager she'd come running up and just kind of like can i have some so then I'd run it down her back too. And boy, that's just become a thing. If she ever hears that thing turn on, she comes running. So um, that would be a good instance of that, you know. So somehow if you've helped them to heal the, you know, being intimate with a human being, being, being softening their defenses around being touched and handled and um, caressed and that, that it can actually be... Um, a nice or pleasurable even thing, you know, like the massaging. It's like, oh my gosh, I had no idea that a human being could actually make me feel these types of feelings. Like, wow. Like, uh, like it just feels um, so soothing to my soul to be um, nurtured and loved in such a beautiful way. And I also feel like some of you in, in terms of temperature, like some of you actually put a heating pad down for your animal or you wrap them up in a blanket or something that makes them warmer or, you know, something like that, something that you actually do for them that regulates their temperature. That's also a way that they've been able to see that your physicality actually makes a difference in their comfort level and the, um, yeah, their comfort level, basically. So they've learned to actually look forward to you being around because they might, there might be pleasure in it. You know, you might make them warmer. You might make them feel safer. You might make, you know, give them tickles or chills by petting them or goosebumps or, you know, whatever. So they want to thank you um, for helping them to trust, to trust the physical body again. Oh, yeah, you've helped them relax. They used to be very, very tense and their muscles would be just all the time, like always on edge. Um, but you've kind of helped them. They might have had PTSD, but you've kind of helped them to relax. And and they might even sprawl out when they're relaxed. They might like have their legs in every direction and just kind of be like, you know, as almost like an over-exaggeration of this is how much I love you. And this is how much I trust you now that I'm in good hands. So um, let's see. Uh, let's see what cards we get here. Okay, for the select, a second collective of animals, not Lizzie for the second collective of animals, what do they want to say? Could you, could you please grab me a surprise while you're out and about? <laughs> uh, they're not, they're not saying that you're not doing that enough. They're saying they love it, love it when you do that. It makes them feel really special. So they would just love it. Um, I'm happy right where I am. So if you're wondering whether they would be best in a different situation, um, maybe they still are a little bit jumpy and you and you just are kind of like, man, am I even getting anywhere with this? You definitely are. 
you are, they are in the perfect place. They're really happy. Um, the pet sitter or person who is supposed to care for me while you're away doesn't care about me at all. Or at least it doesn't feel that way. Could you please find someone else? So it could be an actual uh, pet sitter or something like that. Or it could mean your spouse when you're not there or your partner or your roommate. Maybe doesn't treat them so great when you're not around. Maybe get a, an animal cam or not, not well, just get a cam <laughs> that will notify you when somebody comes in your space or that would film them while they're, you know, doing whatever they do. Um, how much is she? Yeah, I feel like some of them, like, I feel a like cat in particular, like hiding when you're not there, like hiding under the couch or hiding under the bed or something. Oh, my heart breaks when you, when you feel this way, I'm here for you and I love you. So maybe they are just trying to comfort you at this time. Maybe that's why they're acting how they're acting is because they're trying to make you laugh or because they're trying to like, also they're saying that like cats, especially when they're trying to blow off some negative energy from you. Like if they, if they, if they're, if you're in a stressful situation and you just been fighting with somebody or something, we're using that example again. Um, a cat will go running through the house shoom, shoom, and you're like, what in the world are they doing? And we're trying to, we're trying to fight here. And you're just like flying all around the house. It's because they're burning the energy off. They're getting rid of and dis dissipating the excess energy. Um, so I feel like there are all these different ways that your animal is trying to soothe you when you're feeling bad or when you're feeling stressed or whatnot. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, also, um, it could be that the pet sitter or your spouse or your roommate, um, when you're not there, maybe really, uh, does some negative things to themselves. Even maybe they go into a deep depression. Maybe they yell at themselves, you know, animals, they, they can't tell you that, Hey, your roommate was kind of freaking out and kind of, you know, screaming and yelling, by themselves when you weren't around. I don't know. I didn't know what to do. I just hid, you know, they can't tell you stuff like that. Um, usually. Um, so just kind of keep all that in mind. Maybe look into that. I think, Oh, I think there's a spirit or other supernatural energy in our home. Have you, have you also noticed it? Should we do a clearing? Let's look into this deeper. So or maybe the person who's there when you're gone um, could be like practicing black magic or doing some kind of weird ceremony that your animal's like, oh my gosh, what are they doing? Um, okay, so I'm in more pain than I'm letting on too. So, all right, let's let's do a clearing on your on your home for these animals of these collective of this collective. <laughs> Um, when I just got, um, instead of pain, they meant discomfort. They're very uncomfortable with the situation. Obviously, if you live by yourself, this isn't pertaining to you. And or it could be that there's a ghost that does this while you're gone, too. <laughs> and there's that. Okay. Hang on. They're trying to make me shut up. I was like, okay, the coast is clear and your animal came out like looking around like, are you sure? Okay. I had this, <laughs> an example that just comes to mind is so funny. I was, I was going out with this guy and he was a Marine, a sniper <laughs> in the Marines. <laughs> and he didn't know that I was going to go surprise him. And I went, um, I didn't live with him, but I visited enough to have a key and stuff. So I hid it in the closet. I was going to surprise him when he came home from, um, you know, from being away for the weekend in the Marines. He comes through the door and he just starts yelling and screaming at his dad. And I was like in the closet going, oh, what do I do? 
<laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> I was probably like hiding for like, I don't know, a long time, probably 30 minutes or something. And I finally kind of like was able to was open the door without making a sound. And I kind of snuck out and kind of opened the door and closed the door like it just came in. <laughs> I did finally tell him, though, I confessed it once, you know, once I knew everything was okay. And I was just like, dude, I heard you like screaming at your dad. So, I mean, people do weird things when you're not looking, you know, they can, you know, do all kinds of things. So just something to keep in mind. And that story came up for a reason. Not saying that it's weird, you know, because you got to get your feelings out. And sometimes you've got to scream and yell and yell into a pillow and everything. But when you have somebody hiding in the closet who loves you, just just wanted to jump out and surprise you. You know, it's like the last thing I expected. And just sitting there in the closet frozen. Oh. So <laughs> that's how your animal might feel sometimes with this person. Okay. Um, are they gone? Yes. Okay. The home has been cleared. And, and being that this is a collective, it could have been a little, you know, one of you could have had a ghost in your home. The other could have been a roommate and the other, it could have been this and the other it could have been a loud noise outside, you know, but we've covered it. Is there anything else that the, they want to um, convey at this time? They want to sleep with you. They want to cuddle with you, but they can't because they're, they don't, um, they still don't totally, totally, totally trust the human body and, and it, whether it would hurt them or not, if that makes sense. So if your animal seems to love you so, so, so much, but they won't cuddle with you in bed, it's just, I, they may eventually do it after so many years that they just absolutely ironclad know that you're not going to flip out on them if they should try that then maybe they will, but just don't expect it. But, and don't feel bad about yourself that they're not cuddly like that. Just know that it's because they've been treated very, very poorly and it's stuck in their heads and it's really a, like they've been traumatized. And so it's a tough thing for them to get out of that. You know what I mean? So, okay. Anything else, anything else, anything else? They like to stay busy and they like to do things with you or for you. Love it. So keeping them busy is a, is a good thing. However, you can do that. Okay. Third animal. Third animal. Is she, she not come on? Huh? Is that the one? Okay. Divine masculine. Thoth. Okay, and then I saw there's always enough, Sedna. So divine masculine and there's always enough. There's always, okay. I feel like the third, this third collective has something to do with being single and feeling vulnerable, like maybe in a state of lack or feeling like all you have is you and this animal or you and your animals and that you're all alone and kind of a sitting target. So I feel like, um, the animal has kind of had to step in and act as if, and I mean, shoot, if the, this could be two of your animals that are in this category and one of them is in the second one or, you know, it, or it could go, change, <laughs> you know, but just keep this, keep this all, take it all in stride. But that's what I feel like it's saying is that there's an animal that's in the, this collective is feeling like they have to kind of step up and protect you because nobody else is doing it. So you might want to do something to cultivate your own confidence and in, in, in yourself, you know, to really exude that confidence in your household and, and be like in charge and, and don't um, overcome feeling like you're a victim over work on that in your within yourself and don't sit around crying and feeling sorry for yourself and and all of that. Your animal is taking on the burden of it and feeling terrible um, and and doesn't know how to take the burden off of you. And, and it shouldn't have that responsibility either. So I'm going to tell, I'm going to tell your animal, um, you know, that that's not on them. They're not doing anything wrong. And, and it's okay for you to be alone, you know, that you're learning <clears throat> how to stand on your own two feet and to be strong. And that it's a lesson that we, that we go through to learn how to have self-reliance and, and, um, you know, to be autonomous in this at this time in our world so 
and they're not your responsibility. You need to make yourself happy and, you know, you can make your person laugh and things like that. But ultimately, if they choose to be miserable, it is up to them. That's their choice. Um, I feel like there, some of them feel a little bit invisible, like you say the same things to them all the time. They would like you to mix it up and try to use some other language. Maybe the buttons would be good for this for this particular collective. <clears throat> they want some mental stimulation. They want to. Um, they they they're one of the reasons they're obsessed with with how you feel is they're bored. You know, they, they need something more to do. They need some activities to do. Um, yeah, I mean, some, yeah. When I introduced the idea of training, they were just lit up. Like, oh my gosh, really? They could teach me to do this or that or the other thing. And I would know how to do tricks or I would know how to sit or down or go get that thing or what. Like, I could learn stuff like that. They love that. Um, some of you are so consumed with yourselves and your own situation. You're being totally selfish when it comes to your animal. I hate to say, but it looks like you're just like, you're sweet enough to your animal, to this collective. You're sweet. You're you're nice. And you take care of them and everything. But, the, but it, there's not like a real relationship aside from them feeling sorry for you and trying to soothe you. So... Think about your animal. Think think about your animal and how you can enhance your animal's life and instead of thinking so much about you and how miserable you are and how lonely you are. <laughs> Obviously, if this doesn't fit you or a description of how you are with your animals, if you're not constantly repeating yourself to them, saying the same things to them all the time, every time you see them, um, you know, that kind of thing, then this is not for you. This is not your message. But, or you could take bits and pieces of this message too and say, you know what, some, some days, not every day, but some days I am a little selfish. So it would be good to keep in mind that they're watching and they're, and they have hurt feelings over that. You know, they don't feel, they don't feel particularly great when I just make it all about myself all the time. Okay. So bleh. who's in charge? You or me? I need you to be the leader so I can start feeling secure. Okay, so they feel insecure if you don't take charge and if you're not the bot, they don't know what to do. You're just sitting around moping and stuff. So they're just like, uh, I guess I'll just be, you know, they just feel uncomfortable, uncomfortable and insecure because they don't know what to do. They they need some training. They want some training. They want some stimulation. So and they want you to be in charge and to tell them what to do. Um, they're hoping this is their forever home. They're hoping that you're not thinking about getting rid of them. Maybe when you're moping around a lot, they actually think that you're unhappy with them and that you'd rather them be gone. So sometimes we we put off a message, not even realizing what we're doing by the way that, you know, by our body posture and things like that. And they watch everything. Um, I'd like you, I'd like you to understand me better. Could you please try to to learn more about my body language, my breed, gender, behaviors, past history, or whatever else you can. So if you own a dog or a cat or whatever you own, and you haven't looked into their body language, shame on you. <laughs> you should know what a cat means when its tail is straight up and what a cat's you know tail means when it's laying down. If the cat's tail is twitching, you should know what that means. If your dog's ears are perked in a certain way, you should know what that means. If the dog growls in a certain way, you should know what that means. If, um, you know, you should be studying your animal's behavior so you know what's normal and what's not. And don't just get annoyed with something that they're doing. Um, try to understand what, what it is. Why are they doing that? You know, why they're not just being irritable or irritating to you. They're actually trying to communicate with you or they have like an issue. Um, yeah, like uh, at one point Nala was uh, making a weird sound. And and I was like, why are you doing that? <laughs> it's like, what is that sound? It was like a grinding of teeth. It was like, rrr, 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 rrr. 
And it was only in this particular spot that she would do it. And she would just sit at me. And I was like, what the heck? And then, um, and I would just be like, stop that. (laughs) Stop making that. Why are you sitting there looking at me, making that weird grinding sound? And so I was like, is she mad at me or something? (laughs) You know, because you think of grinding teeth and you think of like anger. And I was like, she's sitting there like brooding, like angry at me about something. I was like, what, am I not giving her enough treats or, you know, I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, you know? And then I, um, you know, contacted a a good vet (laughs) and I was like, what does it mean when they do that? So I finally got curious about it and asked, you know, you could always look it up too on the internet and she's like it sounds like it could be an allergy so then I started paying more attention like where does she do it when does she do it you know was it just after she ate or was it around a particular place or whatever and I've uh, narrowed it down to a particular I think she's like allergic to a certain um, thing that one of her things is is made of it's the material (laughs) so I'm like oh so there's a really good example um so try to figure it out whatever just don't nobody should be like settling for feeling irritated with just about anything right now we should try to figure it out figure it out and put more awareness into the situation so that we can actually figure you know figure it out um they're not doing well on a certain medication or food or whatever whatever is there something more natural well there you go so it could be that they're acting the way that they're acting because they're not doing well on their medication or there's like a better solution for whatever it is, or maybe don't buy that material so that they're not allergic to whatever that is. Okay. I don't trust you like I'd like to. So um, it could be because you don't really care about them. You're not really showing them a lot of, of concern about like, do you know when they're upset and they've had a bad day? Do you even know what that would look like? Would you even notice? Or do you just like come home from work and say the same things to them and just walk right by them and just do your own thing, you know? So I think a pet who's living with us or who lives with someone close to us needs a new home, don't you think? (laughs) So (laughs) maybe they're kind of irritated with another animal in the home and they, they don't have you pay much attention and they also... You know, whoever's living there, they're just like, oh, great. I have the person who just completely ignores me and just thinks about themselves. And then this one over here is really irritating in some way, shape or form. So it looks like you just got to do some thinking about your situation and how you might be able to better it for your animal Um, because they're not having so much of a good time. I mean, I think they're they feel they feel pretty bored. They feel pretty bored. So maybe you could even look up, you know, look up a video or look up Jackson Galaxy or or some kind of, you know, Caesar Milan or something. And you say, what entertains cats? What entertains dogs? And just taking them on a walk or just teaching them something. They love to learn things, you know. I would really like to have some energy work done on me. Okay. So... Okay, so how does group one feel? I'm asking the animals. Good. Okay, group two, did I convey the message well enough for you? Okay. Two is okay. Three. Shisha hit my Anna and not Kay La Sanse and I. Um, three has something else to say. Kare in a Kay in the. They're like the sky is the limit. They want you to think outside the box and think of what's possible and that anything is possible. Because I feel like they know you're putting a lid on yourself that you're you're limiting yourself. It's almost like, don't you realize that you, that we could have, we could live in a castle if you wanted to, if you really like learned the law of attraction and learned to bring it in, we could have this glorious, incredible life and stop moping around. It's like your animal is like wanting you to really stretch yourself 
to think what's possible rather than think all those limiting beliefs and thoughts. Uh, They want you to kind of break out and start spreading your wings because they really want to go on an adventure with you. They want to do exciting, wonderful things, um, expansive things with you. So they want to see the situation turn around and they want you to start believing in yourself and believing what you're capable of in the kind of life you could have. Okay. So um, is it for, okay. So we're going to sweep through doing each, doing some spirit, some spirit deck cards on um, one, two, and three. Okay. So what spirit, what would you like to say to group one, please? What would you like to say to group one? What would you say to group one of the pets? Go with the newly and divinely inspired rather than the comfortable but worn out. It's time to let go. Okay. This is for, well, it could be for your pet, but it's, I, I'm meaning this for the owner, for you. <laughs> so go with the new and divinely inspired rather than the comfortable but worn out. Congratulations, you're leveling up right now. So let go of what has been again and allow new to come in for it to be as smooth as possible. You have so much to look forward to. Um, If you let a bully have its way, the bully's wounds get even bigger. Pray instead for you to have the strength to stand up and for the bully to heal. Okay, don't get bullied. And don't bully. (laughs) Most, if not all, of what you're going through involves ascension or leveling up. You'll soon see why all this had to happen. So just uh, to happen just the way that it did. So please trust. Okay. Well, we'll get one more card for for group one. You should take more to quiet, more time to quiet your mind and tune into the subtle realm. We've got your mat, your back, but your mind does not. Okay. Um, All right. So group number two, messages from spirit. Group number two, the the pet parents for group number two, please. Pet parents, group number two. Stop talking negative. uh, Stop talking about negative things in your life and start only talking about what you're grateful for. Take your complaints inside to to hash out in the stillness of your heart. So do Byron Katie's work on it. Don't don't utter, don't utter the words out loud. Those are spells. Um, so um, you could do thank you God for my misery, and so because it'll get you get you thinking. It'll get you coming up with new intuitive ideas on dealing with the situation when you can accept it radically. Love and appreciate you, your body, and your circumstances just as they are. Change comes through radical acceptance. Oh my gosh. Did that just happen? (laughs) Learning how to self-soothe is a mandatory step to liberation and loving others in a healthy way. Rely only on you to come for comfort, uh, for the comfort that you seek and you'll be set free. So learning that autonomy and learning how to self-soothe is important. Um, Pray as if you've already received what you're asking for and it's yours. Okay, one more. Or say positive affirmations too. When you feel afraid, do the deep healing work around it rather than avoiding it. So your animal's encouraging you to, you know, to face face your demons and heal. Okay. So I guess the first group was what your what your animals would say to you, and this is what your animals would I mean, you what your yeah, the other way around. <laughs> This is what your animals would say to you about what you need to do. <laughs> okay. The group three. I'm on group three. Did I say that? Okay. Group three collective for the pet parents. Go with the new and divinely inspired rather than the comfortable but worn out. It's time to let go to the way things have been and to the past. Things you don't have any longer. You've done nothing wrong. Like, don't make yourself feel bad or guilt yourself anymore. It's time to come out of that. Love yourself no matter what anyone else thinks. Your opinion is the only one that matters. Be true to you and be proud of yourself. 
Miracles are headed your way soon. So, uh, so hang tight, stay positive and keep your thoughts on what you'd like to see show up in your world because you'll be crying happy tears. Aww. All right. One more. You're only being given one step at a time because if you knew all that was coming, it would overwhelm you. Please just trust, uh, trust us to guide you. Uh, you don't need all the answers right now. Okay, so um, for all of the parents right now, we're going to take a look at, we're going to pull you, who is guiding the pet parents right now? Inanna, Inanna, believe in yourself. Okay. All right, let's get it. Okay. Um. When did you last allow yourself to dream? Haha, <laughs> that's funny. It sounds like group three. I mean, I guess everybody is though. Are there precious hopes buried deep inside your soul? Does your inner critic vo critical voice crush the tender roots of your yearnings before they even have a chance to grow? Inanna is taking you on a healing journey into the great below of your ignored and denied dreams. There are many riches gleaming within you. Inanna whispers with a knowing smile, just like your pet is doing. Journey with me into the underworld of your self-doubt. Let go of every belief that says you're unworthy or incapable. Suppress your creative desires. Um, suppressing your creative desires can manifest as a chronic malaise, a gray cloud over your head that doesn't that just won't shift. This is because the longing to share your light is part of your sacred contracts to the goddess. There's something you're passionately wanting now, but you've been keeping the desire pushed way down. Don't do this anymore. Believe in your ability to build this beautiful sacred creation. I am queen of both heaven and earth, and I will bring you and I will help bring you your your dreams into reality. Your pets are helping your dreams come to reality. Wow. Use healing affirmations to reprogram negative or self-critical thoughts. Take daily action steps in the direction of your dreams. Shamanic journeying will benefit you or use grounding techniques such as conscious breathing or a root chakra meditation. Your invocation is, I can do it. I'm worthy of creating my dreams. So how beautiful is that? <laughs> your animals believe in you and they know that you can have your dreams come true and that you will. And they are comforting you and helping soothe you at this time. And I'm helping them and supporting them with this video, letting them know how best to support you at this time too. And also eliminating negative, um, negative entities, negative energies in their bodies and in your home and whatnot as well in this video. So um, let me just do one last final clearing and blessing for all of the animals in all three of these collectives and offer them up whatever spirit would like to offer them at this time. <sighs> if there's a certain message that you, that you want to convey to your animal right now, be thinking it right now while I'm doing this uh, blessing. And it will help amplify and help them see more clearly the message you're trying to convey to them. Okay. Um, I am going to reference a video that I did uh, for pet owners underneath this video. So always check underneath my videos to see any kind of reference that I make or just to see what's going on or where you can order a reading or anything like that. It's always going to be down underneath the video. Papa na tahi in shena hai la kiri na tahi san se la poho ma ana ai ke ena tains. Tete ishenshe me pe na ai. Oh, ama ala an. Ama ala ke ena tai. Ama ma shishen kai in. 
Aw. I just saw all of them go to sleep. <laughs> They're like, ah, oh, thank you. We feel so much better. You're welcome. Yay. Anything else you guys want to say or anything else? Anything? Nope. I'm drawn to a masculine card for some reason. Oh. I guess many of you with pets are kind of waiting on your true love if you're watching this channel. So they want you to know that somebody wants to marry you and your animals are supporting you going from being single to being married. Um, <laughs> that's pretty neat. Um, okay. Okay. So some, some of you who've been through a breakup, also your animal is helping you to grieve and they want you to take proper time to do so before starting a new relationship with your, with your true love. So, okay. Happy holidays to you guys. Hopefully this gave you some kind of, uh, uh, helpful information. Obviously, if you uh, want me to talk to your animal further, then I can do that. Um, just get a remote reading, a 20 or 40, 45 minute remote reading on my website. You need to become a member of the Awakened Alliance um, membership, uh, PMA, Private Membership Association, by going to awakenedalliance.org. And then once you're in there, then you go to my services and then you can look at the remote readings from there. Okay, have a beautiful uh, day, weekend, um, and I will talk to you guys later. Give your animals a hug for me. Thanks.